1.4, measure and classify angles is what we are looking at, our objective. By the way, glad that you are uh, with us here. Our objective is I can name, measure, and classify angles. So the essential question that you wrote out is how do I, how do I name angles? How do I measure angles? That's a new one. You're familiar with naming uh, angles. You're also familiar with classifying uh, angles, uh, but now we need to look at uh, how do you measure uh, angles. You may not be familiar with that and how to use a protractor. So how do you do that? Well, an angle, as you probably know, uh, consists of two different rays with the same endpoint. So here's an angle that I have uh, in the darker black here. And so this is one ray <clears throat> here. This is the endpoint, so it would be ray OB. And here's another ray, ray OA. And notice that both these rays share the same endpoint. And between them, then, is your angle. That endpoint is called the vertex. Make sure you label that as vertex. And these two angles here, we call those the sides. So here are the sides of the angle and the vertex of the angle. And this is the angle. And you really could do the outside angle here, but you almost always uh, do uh, the inside angle, the side that's, uh, or the part of the angle, or the angle, uh, that's less than 180 uh, degrees. So we use this protractor uh, here, and let me read through uh, the definition of that. Uh, our, remember, postulate is a uh, an axiom, or a postulate is a, a self-evident truth, a truth that does not need to be uh, proven. So they say, consider, and this is line, there's two arrows on there, line OB, and a point A on the side of uh, line OB. So here's line uh, OB, and here is point A. The rays that form uh, ray OA can be matched one-to-one -one with the real numbers from 0 to 180. And the measure of angle AOB is equal to the absolute value of the difference between the real numbers for uh, ray OA and ray OB. What they're talking about is that as we move this uh, ray OA, as we move it uh, off of ray OB and open it up, let me do it this way so you can see it more easily. In fact, here we go. <clears throat> Here's our uh, ray. As we open up uh, the ray uh, from the uh, other side of the angle, then we can uh, give certain numbers uh, to those rays. And as you know, in a circle, it's 360 degrees all the way around. And so half of that would be 180 uh, degrees. And so we've put this uh, uh, scale on the inside here. And this is going from 0 to 180 degrees. So that's what a protractor is. Before we jump too much into that, though, let me go back and make sure that you understand how to identify a, and classify, or name, that's what it was, right? Remember that was our objective, is to how to name. So let me make sure that you know how to name uh, an angle. Now let's look at this top angle here. And if you were to name that angle, you could either say angle WXY, or you could say YXW. But notice that each time the uh, center letter, whether it's WXY or YXW, the center letter is always going to be your vertex. That's your, uh, the endpoints that shared between those two uh, rays. Now notice that we cannot call this uh, angle up on the top here just angle X, because we don't know what angle we're referring to. If you say angle X, well, what are you talking about? Are you talking about this upper angle here? Are you talking about the lower angle? Or are you talking about this entire angle? Okay, so for this angle here, we can say this is angle A. That's easy enough because there's only one angle on that vertex. But here, there's actually not just two angles. There's a third angle here also, this larger one. So be careful when you are uh, naming angles. The centered letter is always your uh, vertex. And if there are other angles off of that same vertex, make sure that you use uh, three letters, uh, three points uh, to identify that uh, angle so that it doesn't get confused with other angles. 
Okay, let's talk about uh, let's talk about classifying angles. You you know about this. Remember, we probably did this in middle school. Uh, an acute angle is uh, greater than zero but less than ninety. So down here, here's an acute angle greater than zero but less than ninety. A right angle is equal to ninety degrees, and so we often use this box symbol that tells us this is a right angle. Obtuse is an angle that is greater than 90 but less than uh, 180. And then straight angle. Are you familiar with straight angle? That might be a new one for you. Straight angle is when uh, the angle is 180 degrees. So these are really two opposite rays. Remember that term, opposite rays? Rays that share the same vertex but that point in opposite uh, directions and they together they form a line. Uh, that's a, a straight angle that's made between those two opposite uh, angles. Let's talk now about the protractor <clears throat> and uh, help you to understand a little bit better how that how that works. So look at this angle here in the green and what we do for the protractor is we put the center of the protractor uh, on the uh, vertex. Hey let me also while I'm thinking about it, uh, protractor where is it down here? Uh, on your notes, if you would write um, that the word protract or protractor uh, means to extend, the root of it is to extend or lengthen out. So uh, we are protracting. What we're doing with a protractor is measuring how, how protracted, how extended this uh, angle is. So protractor uh, measures how extended or lengthened out this uh, uh, angle is. You can talk about a, a disease that a person has that was a protracted disease. It uh, was a long time that the disease uh, took in order, in, until the person was healed. So protractor uh, measures how extended and how lengthened out uh, this angle is. So notice that we, as I said, we put the center of the protractor on the vertex and then uh, line up the bottom of this protractor uh, uh, with one side of your angle. And notice that as I uh, have an angle here and it comes and it's opened, it starts at zero. See the zero there? Let me get another, another one. Starts at zero and then as it opens up it goes 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and so forth. Here is 90 degrees, so that's a right angle. And as it goes all the way over this inner scale here, or inner dial, uh, you see that goes up to uh, 180 degrees. So that leads us into the addition or the angle addition postulate. And it's real simple, kind of intuitive. Remember, postulate again means uh, axiom is a synonym of postulate, and it is something that is uh, rather intuitive. It does not need to be proven. What we're saying here is that the measure of the blue angle, it's the easiest way to refer to it, the measure of this larger blue angle is the sum of the measure of the green angle uh, plus the measure of the uh, pink angle. <laughs> I almost forgot what color that was. Come on, guy. So the, the blue equals the green plus the pink. That's pretty simple. We can understand that. Let me also talk about the designation, the symbols that we use for the measure of an angle. You can write out the measure of angle AOB if you wanted to, uh, or you can just use this little M. So a lowercase m in front of the angle symbol means the measure of then angle AOB. And again, remember that that center letter, the, the middle point, uh, is always the vertex. That center letter, letter will always be your vertex. So please make sure, maybe you want to pause the video here and make sure that you write that down in your notes. A uh, nice simple summary of what that symbology uh, means or that symbol means. Let's look over your book now and at example three. And this is a quick section, so I'm almost done uh, here and will allow you to jump into examples three and four on your notes. So example three in your book, 
we are given that the measure of angle LKN, remember this uh, center letter here, is your vertex, so LK, there's your vertex, M, okay, so this angle here to the left, the measure of that angle is equal to, that's a number, is equal to 145 degrees. Oh, yeah, oh no, I, I knew that didn't make sense. So we're not talking about this one. I was looking at LKM. I got that wrong. It's actually LKN. So the entire thing here is 145 degrees. And now they're asking us to find the measure of angle LKM. LKM, that's the one on the left hand. And, and also they want us to find the measure of uh, angle MKN. Now if it was me, I would say, Ugh. This guy on the right looks like it's 90 degrees. Hey, if this one's 90 degrees, if the whole thing is 145, right? Then we could say 145, then take away 90, and that would leave us with, what, 55 degrees. Now, I agree. This one on the right does look like it's 90 degrees, but this is geometry. We want to be exact here, and don't estimate and say that looks like 90, therefore it is. No, we have to be able to prove and determine for sure what the measure of that uh, angle is. Okay, so don't jump at, jump at conclusions. Don't make a presumptuous uh, judgment. But let's just use the information they give to us. The whole thing is 145. And we know that the measure of this one on the right is, they give us an expression. Remember, it's not an equation. Equation has an equal sign. This is just an expression of 4x minus 3. And then the one on the left is 2x plus 10. So using our angle addition postulate, we know that 145, the entire angle, is equal to this left angle plus the right angle. So therefore, 145 equals, and then we can plug in our expressions uh, for those, and there we have an equation. Now we have an equation with only one variable, so now we can solve this equation for that one variable. And we ask ourselves, of course, now this is a uh, the units of this uh, expression. So just like you have 145 degrees, so also you have 2x plus 10 degrees, reminding us that it's uh, the units of this angle. But as we solve it algebraically, we can just get rid of, the, and just ignore for now, uh, the units of that expression. So this is not an exponent, that's just say the units of that expression. So there is no exponent out there, there is no number being multiplied uh, inside of these parentheses, so we can get rid of those parentheses, and then you add like terms, 2x plus 4x gives you 6x, 10 minus 3 equals 7. And of course, you know the rest. And if you don't, remember, go to uh, please go to Khan Academy, uh, type in two step equations or multi step equations. It'll remind you how to do these. And then subtract 7 from both sides, and then divide both sides by 6, and you get x equals 23. Now, my temptation would be to say, aha, I have the answer. Bingo. Put 23 in as the answer and move on to the next one. But make sure, slow yourself down, go back and remind yourself and read and know for sure uh, what it is that they're asking for. And they're telling us to find the measure of this left angle and also find the measure of the right angle. So what we have to do is take that x equals 23 and plug it back into our expression. When you do, you get the left angle is 56 degrees. And if we wanted to, now that we know the left angle is 56, we could say the whole thing is 45, then take away 56 from that, and we would get uh, 89 uh, degrees. Uh, so once we find the left angle, we can easily find the right angle. But just to check that, let's go ahead and plug in x equals 23 into this right expression. And when we do, yes indeed, we get that the right angle is also uh, 89 degrees. And then when we add these two together, uh, we would get a total of 145 degrees. So it all checks. That is good. Okay, now you are ready. You are ready to do number three and number four. I'll tell you what, even before you do though, no, no, let's go ahead and do that. So you do number three and four. Go ahead and pause the video and I just have a little brief thing to say after you do that, but pause the video. 
and uh, solve these two problems that you have here. So the first question is, how many degrees is this entire uh, angle here? And if you were to ignore this, this would be a straight angle. These two would be opposite rays of each other. So how many degrees is a straight angle? So add these two expressions together, set them equal to the measure of a straight angle. And then how many degrees is this angle? Well, you see here this, um, this a square there. And so you will remember, hey, a square means it's a right angle. So take the sum of these two expressions and set it equal to uh, the measure of a right angle, which let me give you a small hint, is that number right there. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and solve those two problems. And now let me just show you that at the very end here <clears throat> in your book that there are uh, different um, symbols for congruence. Congruence, and I have that written in your notes, two angles are congruent if they have the same measure. Remember congruent, that word is a, a technical geometry word. Uh, congruent, what does it mean to be congruent? It means they have the same shape and the same size. So with regard to angles, for angles to be congruent, it means they have the same measure. That's pretty simple. Now how do we note on our diagram that two angles have the same measure? What we do is one way of doing it is to draw two arcs. So here's a, a single arc on this angle and a single arc on the other angle. And just those two single arcs tell us that these two angles are congruent to each other. And then if you have two pairs of angles that are congruent, look over here, you can see that these two angles are congruent to each other. So for example, if this angle over here was, uh, let's say 130 degrees, then you would know for sure that this other angle is also 130 degrees. And you know that all because of these congruent markings. And uh, here's another pair of angles that are congruent to each other and notice that they have two arcs. So this one, or double arcs you can call it, uh, this one on the right has double arcs, the one on the left has also has double arcs, so these two dudes are congruent to each other. Another notation, another way of doing it is to put tick marks. So sometimes they'll have just one arc, just one arc, and put one tick mark uh, here, and then another one will have one arc and then this pair will have two tick marks. So these are different notations, different ways of saying the same thing. So you look for whichever, one, whichever angles have the same notation, those are the ones that are congruent with each other. And remember that uh, angle, the measure of angles is equal because the measure of angles um, is a number and angles, which are shapes, are congruent. So remember before I said that numbers, we wrote in your notes, I think it was uh, 1.3 maybe, numbers are equal and shapes are congruent. And I had you write that down in your notes. We'll use it over and over. So in this case, angle measures are equal and shapes are congruent. So notice that the symbols are different. Here it's equal because these are numbers and here it's the equal sign with a squiggly uh, on top of it so that is the congruent symbol shapes are congruent but it being we're done so that was hopefully a little bit quicker than the other ones hope that was helpful to you and we'll see you in class soon